In today's video, we are going to be covering Future Box from the standard format for Temporal Forces. Now, the first thing that we want to start using and throw into our bench in the active spot, whatever you want to call it to get the game going, is this single prize Maridon from the future. The main attack we're going to be utilizing is Peak Acceleration. Not so much because of the damage output that it does, but check out the effect. For 40 damage, one colorless energy, so that means any energy you want to use, Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your future Pokemon in any way you like. This is incredible energy acceleration in the form of an attack, more so in the form of a single prizer like this, and I'll show you why. We're not going to be attaching that energy to Maridon. Oh no, this is only our point guard to get things set up. We're going to be attaching these to our Iron Hands EX. This should very well be dubbed the Future Hands version of the deck although it's future hand and friends future box whatever you want to call it again who cares but this is a good attacker because for arm press two lightning energy and a colorless you do 160 but last hopefully no one's forgotten that ampy very much still exists for one electric energy and three colorless you get to do 120 damage and if you're knocking something else you get an additional prize card this attack is so much more useful it's so much stronger in this version of the deck because not only are you taking more prize cards but you're dealing more damage this is the reason why iron crown ex also from temporal forces its cobalt command is very useful very invaluable attacks used by your future pokemon except iron crown do 20 more damage to your opponent's active pokemon you can already do the math Let's say that you have two or three, maybe four Iron Crown on your bench. Your peak acceleration now is not doing 40, but it does 20 for each additional Iron Crown. You're doing 60, 80, even 100 damage. That, now you're starting to get things going. Do the same thing here. You're not dealing 120 damage with Ampy very much. You're dealing 140, 160, 180. Sometimes you might even be able to do 200. But how are you going to be able to do 200 damage with that? Very simply put, you're going to be using the future booster capsule, which actually came off from Paradox Rift, but they're also including in Temporal Forces. Now we see why. Any card, any future Pokemon that this card is attached to has no retreat cost, but it also does 20 more damage in its attacks. You get where I'm going with this? The damage output ramps up so easily with this deck the way it's built out to be. We're playing the proper energy here. You're gonna wonder why we have grass and fighting energy. We're also including one copy of Iron Leaves EX, which of course, uh, for two grass and a colorless, you do 180 damage with that Prism Edge. Very strong against Charizard, Roaring Moon, any other dark type attackers that happen to be weak against grass. There is no strong grass force, but of course this is an excellent throw in. Especially for this deck, Iron Leaves has also been used in stuff like Lost Giratina decks or Arceus Giratina decks. But it's actually a very good inclusion here. Especially with the ability Rapid Vernier. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to the bench, you get to switch it into the active spot and take on some energy that are attached to your other Pokemon to this one. So if you have one grass here, one grass there, and anything else, Iron Leaves gets to get to the active spot, power itself up, in just one turn that is actually very very good we're actually also including one copy of iron boulder ex not a big deal this is me throwing it in there to see if we can make it work personally if the meta ever has a lot of presence of rcs or anything that's weak to fighting type it actually it's a good idea to include this iron boulder especially since for the most part you're going to probably be trying to use this repulsor axe for 60 damage one fighting and one colorless during your opponent's next turn, if this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if it's knocked out, you get to put 8 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So you're talking about a total of 140 damage output. But, remember, that 60, if you have a couple of Iron Crowns, if you have a uh, future booster capsule attached, you're talking about 80, 100, 120, maybe even 140 damage from one attack and the damage counters as retaliation. This is pretty good. Some of the trainers we're going to be using are Electric Generator. If we're able to thin some of the other cards out of the deck and see if we can get some energy off the top five cards of the deck, attach those to your bench electric Pokemon any way you like. Namely, you want to be powering up your Iron Hands this way. 
Um, but yeah, that's definitely an option you have. We're going to be bringing him out with Techno Radar. You discard one other card from your hand, but you search your deck for two future Pokemon and put them to your hand. Very useful because it's an efficient way to get your Pokemon out, uh, especially your Iron Crowns, your Iron Hands, stuff like that. Just make sure that when you do use it, obviously you have a card that you don't mind discarding. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very bad thing. We already talked about the booster capsule, but we're also rocking two copies of Heavy Baton. Specifically, you want to attach this to your Iron Hands so that if this Pokemon is attached to, it has a uh, retreat cost of exactly four, they're in the active spot, they get knocked off from damage from an attack, then you get to move up to three basic energy cards from that Pokemon, from Iron Hands, to the rest of your bench Pokemon in any way you like. You can either set it up, use that to set up a second Iron Hands, you can use that to set up a Boulder, something else, doesn't matter. You have that option in that form. One other search card we've got, three copies of Nest Ball. We're not really using the Ultra Ball here because we don't really want to discard resources and everything is a basic EX with the exception of the Maridon. They're all fairly easy to fetch out. And three copies of Earthen Vessel so we can get our energies out of the deck. Two copies of Lost Vacuum. You could probably do one so that you can remove any Pokemon tool or stadium in play and throw it into the Lost Zone after you get rid of one of yours. Four copies of Arvin, any deck that uses attached uh, item cards and tools. It's a very good idea to have Arvin, especially in this version, since we're using a lot of uh, booster capsules. Not a bad option. We have four Iono, two Boss. Uh, those are our supporters of choice. And we have one copy of EXP Share to, again, cycle through that energy and keep it going. Should you ever get stuck in the active... We have three copies of Switch Card because everything here is a basic attacker. No heavy commitments, plus one counter catcher. This really, uh, it, it's a deck that has a ton of potential. I haven't been copying any one build in particular from like a YouTuber or any popular player. But I figured this is a version of Future Box. Let's see how we can do. You can play around with the energy here. Uh, at least three copies of the Grass Energy so you can use your um, Iron Leaves. And enough electric energy so you can hopefully fetch those out with electric generator and your Maridon. Let's go ahead and check this deck out. I feel like most decks we play want to go second and I love you garlic, our opponent's name, decided to go first. So we have a mulligan, unfortunately. Our opponent gets to see, I have a sneak peek of what it is we're playing. But that's fine. They have darkness sleeves. I think usually with people, it doesn't matter what they choose because they may or may not be advertising what they play. And we've got the perfect opening Pokemon to play with. And let's see what we're up against. They draw their one Mulligan card. I always would. Who can't blame you? Is this really a dark deck? If it's Ancient Box, I think we might have a little bit of trouble. And it is not. It is Radiant Charizard. So this just might be the Charizard EX deck. <laughs> it's the best deck in the format right now. BDIF. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Okay. So Radiant Charizard. It's not doing anything this turn. So unless they get something else, I doubt they can retreat. If we can somehow get three energy... Then, let's see. Let's Arvin. Switch cart is not a bad option. Switch cart. And do we want to boost your capsule? Maybe we can. What if we can generator? I think this is high rolling it, but honestly, if we can get energy right now, actually inspect the board. If we can get energy right now, that would be huge. The only other thing I would think to do is to get Earthen Vessel, but it's not going to matter. Let's try that. Let's try that. So it's either going to be attached to Maraid on an attack or see if we can donk. Let's see what Generator does for us. Or you know what? Let's get some... Let's, just, let's thin the deck a little bit, right? Let's thin the deck a little bit. Let's get out our Iron Crowns. Never a bad idea. Put them in there. Right now we're doing 80. Right on self could do 100 damage, so maybe we just do nothing. Generator number one. 
Okay. Generator number two. Do we do it? Oh, so close. So close. Man. That stunk. We could have dunked this opponent. Doesn't matter. Let us now... 80 is exactly half, so let's just do that. Swing. And our opponent's got a little bit of pressure, so they got to figure out what they're going to do. They got to do so quick. Uh, I think this is good. Let's do one grass energy, why not? If they don't do something this turn, they are toast. Okay. Can they get out of the active? Do they even have another Pokemon to bench? So I didn't show it earlier, but when you actually attach a booster capsule from your hand to your Pokemon, there's this little airy, like, electric future light around them, like a little aura. Pretty cool. They get Buddy Poffin. Okay, great. They're in the game. Good for you guys. I kind of wish I had a boss's orders, but I don't really have a way to switch it out because then I could just go after this little Charmander there. Although, to be honest with you... We could just kind of start swinging with Iron Hands. Yeah. We really can. So they're evolving into Charmeleon and Pidgeotto. That's that's an interesting version of the deck. Okay. You've got to believe that they have Charizard in their hands ready to attack with or to evolve. Hmm. Kind of wish I had another Iron Hands or another Arvin, but this deck unfortunately doesn't really have a lot of draw power, or I just didn't come up with it very well. Let us go ahead and peak acceleration, knocking out the Radiant. Our opponent still has to figure out their setup, to be honest with you. And the one card I could really use is a... Iron Leaves. But is it in the deck? We don't know. We just don't know. Because this way we have one additional attacker that could just one-shot Charizard, but I don't know if we have it or not. If we happen to have Heavy Baton and Iron, uh, Iron Leaves, we're in the driver's seat. So... Hopefully our opponent does not have Pidgeot, but it looks like they do. Or they're just promoting the no retreat Pokemon. That's always the move. If you ever have something that can retreat for free, that you can put into the active to promote them. You want to do that just so you have additional options. You know, you get to set up your other stuff, prepare, etc. And now they got Charizard as expected. What we need right now is Arvin. This deck, I don't think, has Poke Gear. That'd be a great option because then we could have just all we could have gotten was get an Arvin, get the heavy baton, prepare our next attacker, and that's essentially game because we're gonna take a bunch of prize cards. And they're gonna go with the Charizard. I don't blame them. They might think that they're in a well a good position, but they're really not. And that's a waste of an energy attachment right there. Because 210, that does not knock out our iron hands. And they have a XP share, so that's actually not good for them. We're gonna be taking three prize cards in two turns. I don't mind doing this because then that puts us so much closer to finishing things up. 200, 160. Hmm. We can always switch card next turn and then booster capsule to attach or to recover some energy. So I'm not going to do that right now. So honestly, all we can do is just punch him in the face for 200. Now, they really need to start thinking about a second attacker. They might think their Pidgeot EX is a good second attacker, but it's really not. Your Pidgeot's just a tech. Quick Search is amazing, 
but it's not an attacker. 120 is not going to knock anything out. Also, they have a bunch of cards in their hands, so like it just feels like it's clunked up. They really... Okay, another Buddy Poffin fine. That works. That does work. But now we're needing Boss to bring out that Pidgeot. I still need a Heavy Baton. And we need Iron Hands. And I don't know this turn would be ideal. Ideal, ideal. If that can even happen. You see? So they hit us, but... For what? Nest Ball. Mm. Nest Ball is not terrible, but if I would have preferred for it to be an Ultra Ball so we can get Iron Leaves. Let's see what's in the deck. Why not? At least well, this way we can get another Iron Hands. What else are we going to do, right? We can manually attach to him because we expect it to be another attacker. Probably not going to happen. Let's switch cart to recover. Or do we want to do that? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's not going to make a difference, right? It's not going to make a difference, ladies and gentlemen. Although, steady fire breathing. You know what? Let's do it just in case. Let's do it just in case. You never know. Maybe they misplay. And then we can. We're going to need it for next turn anyway. So let's boost your capsule to see the little aura. Let's boost your capsule to Iron Crown. Actually retreat. Go in. Hands has a fresh 50 HP, and we're going to amp so we can get three prize cards. Let's see if they have Rare Candy and Charizard, or Charmeleon, or something. Um, this game really could go either way. I mean, the, to, to our opponent's credit, they're, they're using the best deck possible. You know, we got another Iron Crown. We do have an Arvin, so that's actually good. That's really, really good. But unfortunately, we're going to lose our energy this turn. Yep, there it is. We're going to lose our energy this turn. Now they're dealing to 70, which is enough to attack to one-shot anything. Now, do they have enough energy? That is the question, because they've already burned five. Two is in their discard, and three are on their Pidgeot. And then they have three... Okay, apparently they have three fire, uh, ten fire energy in this deck. Sure, whatever. <laughs> if we happen to have some generators, that would actually be pretty good. Except we're going to get one shot. Mm. Why play that version of the Charizard in this deck? You don't need... He doesn't need 6 energy, and he doesn't need 4. That this, this, that made no... Di what? What are you doing? What are you... Okay, that Iono is actually good for us, too. <laughs> um, Let's see. They're dealing 60. I think all we need is boss... But we don't have a way to search it out. We got this heavy baton, but it turned too late. Okay. We promote our free retreater. I need an Iono myself. Okay. If it does have damage counters, it does 100 more. They're just going to knock us out this turn. Um, Earthen Vessel. Get an electric and we get a grass. Electric. Spread the energy around. If I can top deck Iron... 
leaves next turn, that would be beast. Uh, okay. We're going to retreat. And we will do 200. If they attack us with that Charizard, it's game. They should want to retreat into the other Charizard. But then that puts them at one prize left for them. They're likely going to win this game, but that's okay. That's fine. For the most part, we have been able to showcase pretty much what this deck can do. There's so many ways you can play Future Hands, Iron Hands, Future Box, whatever you want to call it, because it's very flexible. And in the next format, you best believe they're going to be adding to this Future Box uh, deck. It's very versatile, very cool. Surprised how long the game is gone. It's actually gone longer than that Ancient Box single prizer versus single prizer mirror match that we had. If you guys are enjoying this, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to keep covering different decks. We've gotten a lot of different new decks in Temporal Forces. So it's actually part of the reason that got me excited to building new decks and playing them out, just testing them out. Hope you guys are enjoying it as well. That's a knockout. Let's see if we can get Iron Leaves out of nowhere. Doubt it. You never know. Right on. Yeah, there's no other way to do it. Um. Yeah, no, there's no other way. We could pass, but our opponent's just gonna attack and then they get their last prize card. So that's it. We shall concede this one valiantly. We give up. Yeah, Charizard's just really, really good. Even though that deck, our opponent had a very slow start, very slow. Some other decks are like in a really big tournament. They probably would have, you know not been as successful but again hope you guys enjoyed it stay tuned for some more deck profile videos and gameplay until next time